Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Two, one. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm back again with Lori Baker. Lori, welcome. Thank you. You're here today to talk to us about string piecing, correct? That's correct, and I really like to do string pieced quilts. Um, there kind of aren't rules, and you use up a whole bunch of scraps. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that as quilters, we, we always are trying to figure out how to use up the leftovers. Yes. And this is a great way to use leftovers. And everybody loves my string piece quilts, so, yes. so let's just keep playing around with them and see what we can do. Now, I know you were talking about this quilt that you were working on, and then when you brought it in, you had it hanging up in your office, I think it was just yesterday, the day before. It just, every time I walked past your office, it just caught my eye because it's, it's beautiful. You chose sort of a, a unified color palette, just a couple of colors, you could say purple and green, I guess, um, but so scrappy and interesting, and it all hangs together. It does. So let's talk about how you got this look. Okay, so the first thing that I, I did, I'm making this quilt for my niece and the, the request was cool colors. So I just went in my scrap pile and pulled out all the blues and greens and purples and had this huge scrap in, pile in the middle of my floor. Um, I piece on paper foundations mm -hmm. and typically I use an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and then square it. So I've got an eight, eight and a half by eight and a half inch square. Mm -hmm. And the reason I do that is I recycle used paper. It's a great Why use not? for it. Right. Why not? Um, and I just start throwing things together and there aren't any rules and you can use whatever you want. I use, if you look at the quilt, it's got everything from real formal floral prints to kids' prints, there's even one 30s reproduction print in, in here, and I'm not sure how that got in there because I wouldn't have ordinarily put it in, but it's not objectionable because the quilt is so scrappy. Right, and it all, it, the scrappier it gets, the more it hangs together That's right. in a way. That's you know? right. I did like the look of one particular fabric in the center of every block, so I chose the, the aqua it may look white on camera, but it's it's an aqua plain strip it's down the, the middle. It's the palest aqua possible, and it did it does sort of read white, but then um, when you see it against the paper foundation, then you can see right, the color better. Right, right. But what it does, it just gives that nice softness. And it does. Blends in a it little does. bit. It does, and mm -hmm. it gives you um, uh, lots of de design possibilities because yeah. you've got that one thing on every single block. And it gives your eye a place to rest, yep. as we like to say in the biz, um, <laughs> it, gives, it gives that um, just a calmness in the midst right. of all the scrappiness. Right. Great. So let's talk about how I do the blocks. Okay, should I move this out of the way? Yes, please. All right. As I said, big. I use, uh, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so. I use these? paper foundations for this particular one, and most of the time I use eight and a half inch squares of paper. And like I said, uh, some of them are, are recycled mm -hmm, paper. Mm -hmm. um, I use a 90 needle because I want a little bit bigger hole. Okay. Um, so the paper's easier to remove at the end. Do you shorten your stitch length? I shorten my stitch length and I feel like thread color doesn't matter because it's very scrappy. Chances are the thread's gonna match something or the other at some point down the line. It's also where I use up the ends of bobbins. Okay, So 50 weight works for going through the paper and the fabric? Yes, okay. yes. Um, and in fact, I'm not even all that particular about that. Uh, you know, if there's some 40 weight that I need to use up, okay, that'll work. Okay. <laughs> so We're not precious. We're, no, no. The, the critical thing is you want that needle size to be a little bit bigger and you want to shorten your stitch length Got because it. it makes the paper easier to remove. Great. Okay, so what's next? So now I want to show the strips. I cut my strips any place from an inch and a half to two and a half inches, and I do not measure if I think it's two and a half, okay, that'll be good. Mm -hmm. If I have to measure, uh, 
it's close enough if I have to, if I'm not sure, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. This one's too wide. I can tell. It's wider than what you want to use. It's wider yeah. than I want to use. So then I'm going to cut that either in half or maybe an inch and a fourth and an inch and three fourths. Something. Mm -hmm. And again, it, it doesn't really matter. Just it's more interesting if the strips are a little narrower. And then this one, oh, yes. this, this strip is, you said it's, um, you cut it on the bias. Yes, this is actually leftover binding from a quilt. And because it had this, this pretty, pretty checker plaid thing, mm -hmm. I cut it on the bias because that shows off better on the binding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't care that this is bias. Again, it'll you're work. stitching to the foundation. I'm stitching onto a foundation, so it'll work. Great. So now let's show them uh, a couple of the stitched foundations. So here's what happens first. I just run that diagonally across the foundation mm -hmm. and right sides together, line up the edges, and stitch from one end to the other. I like to go diagonally because we use up more strips, more sizes of strips that yes, way. Yeah. And as we'll see later, it really opens up your design exactly. possibilities as well. And then do you press after each one? Or are you just finger pressing? Or I finger press at this point. Uh, but when I get ready to, to add the next layer, I'm going to actually use the iron. OK. Um, just because I think it, it makes things lay flatter. And, and then I don't have any bunching going on. So it's just easier that way. I do a fun thing when I actually stitch, and that is I want to line up this fabric so I'm a quarter of an inch past the edge of the paper, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go ahead and put it under the machine, and I'm going to stitch. So you've got a really long tail there. I do have a really long that's tail. By, that's intentional. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I'll deal with that in a minute. And, and it's so funny because I'm trying to use up scraps. But in order to use my scraps most efficiently, I don't want to cut it off too long. OK. Happy medium there. Exactly. So I'm just using a quarter inch seam. OK. Same as I'd ordinarily use. And when I get a couple, three inches from the end so I can see where the paper and the fabric meet, mm -hmm. now I'm going to cut off my strip. And I'm going to cut it a quarter to a half an inch from the edge of the paper again. Okay. okay. And then I've... You save this. Yes, because okay. I, it might be just what I need for the next one. I will put it aside for you then, because you just never know. And then again, I'm just going to finger press that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and sew another strip on this side. And then I'll take it to the iron. You build it out. Side, exactly. One side, then the other, one side, then the other. Exactly. Okay. So here's one that we've got all the way done. And I did want to say something here about the fabric. I, I had one of those epiphany kinds of things. When I'm making a string quilt, if I have an ugly fabric, I cut it in narrower strips. But as I was making this, I thought, what I call ugly may not be what my niece calls ugly. So I just went ahead and left the fabric, whatever. So it's up to us to guess which one you think exactly, of as ugly in here. Exactly. I mean, I guess I can guess which one you're mm -hmm. talking about. And, but, and it doesn't matter because, again, you get all those scraps together and they don't stick out. No. I cut from the back when I, when I square my block, just because it's easier to see the, the way up. No, here we go. Easier to see the paper edges. And I'm just going to line this up. Cut two sides. That's why I like to use the square ruler. Mm -hmm and then flip it around and 
cut the other two sides. Got it. And that is ready to go on the design wall because of the, all the design possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, I do like to use my design wall. Let's when take a I look start. at it now that it's so nice and neat. See, it really, it really takes on its shape. It does. Yeah, it does. And um, it's fun to watch what happens as far as uh, design possibilities mm -hmm. when you get all these things together. These string piece blocks work together kind of like log cabin blocks because there are so many possibilities. I frequently start with that medallion look for the center. Mm -hmm. But then you can continue and you can make more of those diamond shapes like I did on the one we showed at the beginning of mm -hmm. the show. Or you can make it so that we've got concentric Square. circles or squares or whatever you want to call them going around the middle. Is that right? Yes, that that's is. right. No, I've got something wrong here. No, that's right. Okay, all right. I'm going to trust you. That one is what's wrong. Got it. There we go. So we've got mm -hmm. our, mm -hmm. our light aqua just making more and more, yeah. we'll call them rings, even though they're square shapes. Right. Or you can make zigzags. Okay. Is that right? Yep, you're doing fine. It shouldn't be this hard sometimes, but you know. But, but that's all right. Overall. And like I said, that's why we have design walls. Yeah. You can also make everything go the same direction. So you've just got this diagonal line going across the whole quilt. And nice. everything winds up looking different. Uh -huh. And this is your time to play around. So if you have a lot of this purple fabric, you might not want it all in one corner of the quilt. Mm -hmm. You can kind of spread things around. Just a fun thing to do. Looks great. Another thing that I do like to play with when I'm doing string piecing is I like to make blocks out of string pieced units. Making your own fabric in a way? It is, yeah, sort mm -hmm. of. So when I do that, just because it's easy, I like to go with 10 inch squares because there are so many patterns for pre-cut 10 inch squares. Right. So I use a tear away foundation that I cut in 10 inch squares. Do the piecing the same way as I usually do, although sometimes I'm, I throw in a little bit more piecing. This was a strip that was already pieced that I used across the center. And as long as you keep a fairly consistent lines going across, other than these little guys going up and down. You'll still have the design possibilities. Got it. If you put in a whole bunch of the piecing with lines going both ways, then it, it messes up the way it reads when it's... It becomes more of a crazy block. Exactly. And not a string block. Yep. That's so it. not that one is better than the other. It's just different. It depends on the look you're going for. Exactly. Got it. So this 10-inch square, I could just use as a 10-inch mm -hmm. square. Or I could cut it up into other pieces, and that's what I like to do. So I've cut the 10-inch square into 5-inch squares. Again, a very popular pre-cut size. Exactly. And then I made a 9-patch block. You want to hand sure. me the 9-patch? So there's a 9-patch block mm -hmm. with 5-inch squares. And you, again, you took advantage of the directionality. I did. Directionality of, the, uh, of your piece. Exactly. String. Block. And you'd get a different look if you ran those all in the same direction. Again, play on the design wall. Yeah. Uh, another thing I did was I cut my piece in diagonal quarters, so then I could make hourglass blocks. Mm -hmm. 
just lots and lots of possibilities. Yeah, and then again, you can play with the direction. Right. Because with a quarter square block, you're going to get two going in one direction and right. two going in the you know, right. opposite direction. Exactly. And design wall is your friend in this instance. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, and I, I just, like I said, I love the string piece blocks because they use up so many of our scraps. And you have a lot of scraps. I do. <laughs> I really do. Well, all of these are great ideas, and I'm sure your niece is going to love the quilt. Love it. It's beautiful. Didn't you say that she was willing to redecorate around whatever quilt you might give yes. her? Yes. Yes. I asked for color suggestions, and they said, oh, she'll redecorate the bedroom. Do whatever you want. <laughs> well, this is a quilt she's been waiting for, and it's uh, well worth the wait. So. I think so. I yeah, think yeah, she'll yeah. love it. Well, thanks again. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.